Hello guys and welcome back to another YouTube video on my channel and today's video's topic is going to be another paper review specifically the title is A20 promotes the metastasis of aggressive basal light breast cancers through the multi monoubicatulation of snail 1. So A20 is currently commonly known as a regulator of inflammation or a DUB or a deubicatulase and in this paper, the researchers found a potential new function of A20 as an E3 ligase to ubiquitinate snail 1, which makes breast cancer, or specifically triple negative breast cancer, or breast cancer with a high metapotential, become more aggressive. So why did they exactly choose A20? In the paper, they mentioned that A20 had a both the oncogenic roles in some of the cancer types that were previously studied, and in another study, that A20 had a tumor suppressor function, and therefore they believe that depending on which cancer that the specific A20 was in, that they played a different role in tumor eugenesis by collaborating with different oncoproteins or tumor suppressors. And furthermore, A20's function in cancer cells are not that commonly known, which is why the study proved to be very important. Now let's move on to figure one. In figure one, the main point of the experiments were to show that the A20 levels were highly expressed in only highly metastatic breast cells. So as you can see, they found a high amount of the A20 protein expression and mRNA expression through several data sets and experiments in triple negative breast cancer and a breast cell with a high metastatic potential. And furthermore, they found that high A20 levels were associated with a poor patient survival. Now on to figure two, the goal of this particular figure was to see whether A20 actually played a role within the highly metastatic breast cells. Then in A and B, we can see that the knocking down or knocking out or just getting rid of A20 levels within these breast cells decreased TGF beta 1 activity, which is related to the migration and metastasis of these cells. And furthermore, in D and E, we can see that among the downregulators of A20, which are SNAIL1, ZEB1, and TWIST, SNAIL1 seems to be the only protein to be affected by the knockdown of A20. So then, when studying these levels in F, G, H, and I through mRNA levels, we could see not a big change happen, indicating that this A20 snail 1 activity only happens at the translational level. And furthermore, this only happened once again in basal-like breast cells. This figure suggests that A20 actually plays a role within the high metastatic breast cells and that it may do so by regulating snail 1 levels at the protein level. Then in figure 3, because we could guess that A20 and snail 1 had a correlation to one another within these highly metastatic breast cells, the researchers actually took on to research whether A20 actually only controlled snail 1 within these specific breast cells. And by studying the TGF beta 1, which is, as mentioned before, related to migration and metastasis, we could see that the knockdown or the knockout of A20 only impacted snail 1 at the protein level. And furthermore, we are able to confirm that A20 controls snail 1 at only the protein level through cyclohexamide and MG132, which are markers for the protein levels. This figure confirms what we originally hypothesized in figure 2, that A20 and snail 1 would have a correlation to one another within the highly metastatic breast cells. And we can see that this correlation only happens between the protein levels and not the mRNA levels. 
Then in figure four, the researchers were trying to see whether A20 actually impacted the invasion through both in vitro and in vivo study. As you can see in parts A, B, and C, the Boyd and Chamber invasion study was used, and as you can see, the knockdown of A20 significantly decreased the invasion rate. And then D through H were all indicating the in vivo or animal experiment. And as you can see, they use the India blotting method, which means that the lungs will or turn black while the cancer will show up as white. And once again, the knockdown of A20 significantly decreased the metastasis. And in fact, in F, there was no sign of metastasis that was shown. This data confirms that A20 does play a major role in the invasion of breast cancer cells. Then in figure 5, because we were previously able to confirm that A20 does in fact regulate snail 1, the researchers were trying to see exactly how the snail 1 is regulated by A20, whether it be direct or indirectly. As can be seen in part C of this figure, Snail 1 can be seen to be monoubicatilated by the A20, and we can tell because in that singular band, that usually indicates a monoubicatilation, while ubicatilation would form a smear or form a ladder. And then in part D, we can find that the seven lysine residue areas were impacted within the snail 1 monoubi, therefore indicating that particular area had no impact on the snail 1 monoubi from A20. Therefore, this figure indicates that the snail 1 is directly monoubicatilated by the A20 and that the 7KR region common for the ubiquitin is not important for that snail 1 monoubi. Then in figure 6, do researchers take a look at specific lysine residues where they expected the snail 1 to be monoubicatilated by A20? And specifically, they found three lysine residues as mentioned for the title and found that not all of the 8KR region was necessary for the snail 1 to be monoubicatilated and that only three of the regions were necessary and this was proved through both western blots and mice experiments. Therefore, this proves that the 3KR region within the snail 1 is vital for the A20 to monoubicatilate snail 1. Figure 7 shows exactly where the A20 monoubicatilate snail 1. Interestingly enough, the researchers were able to find that through the inhibition of the GSK3 beta for the snail 1, the A20 was able to monoubicatilate snail 1 within the nucleus and not the cytoplasm, as can be proven through figure 7e and figure 7g. So overall, what this particular figure shows is that A20 monoubicatilates snail 1 at the 3KR region within the nucleus. Then in figure 8, the researchers proved what they have shown in the previous figures through actual human patient tissues and data sets. And as you can see, they were able to find that the knockout of A20 significantly decreased the cell viability combined with doxorubicin and doxotaxel, which are both commonly used treatment methods for breast cancer patients in both the triple negative breast cancer cells and highly metastatic breast cells. And furthermore, they were able to find that once again, A20 was able to regulate snail 1 at the protein levels only and that the A20 controlled snail 1 levels at the nucleus. And furthermore, they were able to show that this does not happen at the mRNA level and only happens at the protein levels. So now on to the final part of the paper, which is the discussion. The paper states that the snail 1 is multi-monoubicutilated by the A20 proteins only at that protein level.
And furthermore, they suggest that the A20 controls the snail one through a TGF beta one induced EMT. And furthermore, they suggest the use of A20 as a potential prognostic biomarker to predict metastasis and breast cancer patient survival. This is very important because currently, although there are many treatment options and many diagnostic methods, something that becomes a little more specific to these metastatic patients may be beneficial for the future. So thank you so much.